colleagues. I ask members to please remember that Canadians are looking at us. Oh, you better believe Canadians are watching. The NDP announced they will continue to support the Liberals. The Premier of Quebec begs the Bloc to vote down the government. Pierre calls both of them out, and all hell broke loose in the House of Commons today. Let's take a look. Mr. Speaker, the Premier of the Quebec Nation said today that the Liberal government's decision to double the number of temporary immigrants, bringing it to 600,000, will imperil social services for Quebecers. Will the leader of the Bloc Québécois listen to what the Premier of the Quebec Nation is asking? Who is asking that the Bloc Québécois not support the Liberal government next week? and that they support the interests of Quebec and the Quebec nation. So for those that don't know, this is true. Uh, this isn't Pierre making something up. Um, the, uh, the leader or, or the premier of Quebec, Francois Legault, um, has publicly stated that he wants the bloc to vote down the government to bring them down in order to prevent any more damage being done to his province. That's pretty significant. It's really significant. When you're like, okay, I know you guys have stuff that you want from this government, but you need to vote them down because them staying in power any longer is going to seriously, seriously continue damaging our province. Right. So it's really, really interesting to see that happen in Quebec in that you have the premier saying, no, side with the conservatives and bring down this government. Um, it's so shocking, really. Th there's a lot of chess moves being played here. Yeah. Uh, in the in in anticipation of the upcoming confidence vote next week. So, but the interesting thing is, is in this question, Pierre didn't direct any question towards the government. The Honorable Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would just like to say that, like you, I used to be a page in the House of Commons, and I'd like to thank and welcome the new cohort of pages. We know that their responsibilities and services are extremely important. Thank you for being here with us. Now, it's laughable what the leader of the opposition is saying. He's saying that we should cut, cut, and cut to help Quebecers, including in health care, child care, and so on. Thank you. Yeah, because the liberals are saying, you know, let's just keep bringing people in to overload the health care that people already have. Right. Right. How long did it take for you to get your knee repaired? Well, it was December to May, so six months, but they had put you on um, like a, a cancellation list because they knew that like if our son decided that eh, I feel like going and running into traffic right now, um, you wouldn't be able to go catch him and that it could put him at risk. So they put you on a cancellation list. Right. I made sure they knew it was actually a safety issue for yeah. our son that I'd be able to move around. Yeah. So, but still six months and it took, I think, four months. Just to get the MRI. Yeah, just to get the MRI. Um, so, yeah. and, and I'm one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. There are so many people out there that are waiting and waiting and waiting for surgeries that are deemed quote unquote non-essential. Well, and um, you know, we were talking with uh, our moderator Pandemodium last night on the way home. And uh, you know, his wife was telling us that um, they've, been, they've been waiting for over a year now for a family doctor because they moved from a city to a more rural location. And it's not like super rural, it's like a small town. Um, it's not like they're in the middle of nowhere, but they've been waiting over a year for a family doctor. Yeah, and uh, because, because of the way our system is designed, um, you know, there, there's no referrals for any medical treatments or anything like that because um, the specialists in the regions that they're in want to keep that money in that region. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Just let... It's not just the Premier of the Quebec Nation, but also the PQ in Quebec that is condemning this centralizing, expensive government. He said 
that this government voluntarily destabilized Quebec, and that's an abuse of power by the federal government. The Bloc Québécois is propping up a party that is abusing Quebec, according to the PQ. Why has the leader of the Bloc Québécois abandoned the Parti Québécois and all Quebecers to keep the most centralizing prime minister in history in power? And this is this is interesting. Notice that because Pierre always starts his opening questions um, in French, um, and then he flips to English after. But he's only talking about Quebec here, and that you have all of these political forces in Quebec outside of the bloc saying, "What are you doing? Vote down this government." Well, it's part of the political strategy, right? Pierre needs the bloc on side to vote down the confidence. He needs the bloc and the NDP. Um, he's already kind of taunting the NDP that if you vote confidence with the government, as in you vote against what the conservatives want, everybody's going to see you for the hypocrite that you are. Now, the bloc have seen this as an opportunity. Well, the NDP aren't siding with the government anymore. Maybe we can force the government to give us some stuff in exchange for voting confidence with them. Um, and Pierre's trying to show them that if you do that, the leader of, like the premier of Quebec, is going to be pretty upset with you. So it's a very, very interesting tactic. Well, and who are they going to be listening to in Quebec? Are they going to be listening to the premier? Or are they going to be listening to the leader of the, you know, federal, federal bloc party who only has like, you know, 39 people in his, in his caucus? So, um, I'm going to be willing to bet they're going to be listening to the premier. So this this may be very interesting to see how the uh, how the political uh, forces actually react in Quebec and and what happens next. But at the same time, the federal bloc party knows that when the conservatives take power, they're going to be getting a majority and the conservatives are not going to care about what agenda the bloc wants to implement. Like they don't need them for anything. They don't need them for votes. They don't need them for anything. The conservatives can do whatever they want. So the bloc sees this as like their last chance to try to get something for Quebecers to try to get some of their policies implemented because they won't have that opportunity with a majority government. Well, the problem is there, they have no guarantees that it's even going to happen because you know, the NDP while they say they've ripped up the agreement, well, you know, they're still supporting this guy. So you may not actually have the, the opportunity that you think you have. So it may cost you politically if you continue to vote in confidence of this government. Once again, and with great re regret, this is a matter that has nothing to do with the federal government. That said, I see that the Minister of Canadian Heritage is rising. The Honourable Minister. We know that the last time that Premier Legault decided to, for, to become an ally of the Conservatives, we know that Quebecers had their say about that. They didn't like it at all. And we know that Mr. Legault and the leader of the Parti Québécois want to destroy an incredibly important institution for Francophones in Quebec. I'm talking about Radio-Canada. We will always fight for our culture and for Quebecers. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, the Prime Minister has lost his Quebec lieutenant. He's going to run at the provincial level. But luckily, he's found another Quebec lieutenant. That's the leader of the Bloc Québécois. Who will be voting to increase spending by $500 billion in inflationary spending. He's voting to increase the size of the public service. He's voting in favor of a government that has broken the immigration system. In fact, it is the conservatives who are the real defenders of Quebec. It's it's interesting, Pierre, the opportunist, uh, right? And uh, if you hadn't heard, what he's talking about is Pablo Rodriguez has said, I'm out. I has am he officially? Uh, yeah, <gasps> he said, I'm done. I didn't hear that. He is uh, He is now, first he stated he was going to, 
you know, sit in the Liberal caucus as he pursued his leadership nomination for the Liberal Party of Quebec. Um, then he got a bunch of advice saying, what are you doing? That's going to look terrible. So he has now declared he's running as an independent. Uh, so he is no longer in the Liberal caucus as he pursues his leadership. So does he uh, stay in cabinet? Uh, no. Um, so there was another announcement today because he was the transport minister. Anita Anand is now the transport minister. So there has been a few shufflings going on. And this is huge, folks, because Paulo Rodriguez was the uh, Quebec lieutenant. Uh, yes. And uh, that's essentially his main liaison into the political sphere inside of the Quebec province, candidates, and, uh, and the local government. So this is a huge shift, um, one that we wondered if we were going to see because there was rumors about this happening. Yes, I recall the rumors. That's why I didn't realize it had actually gone through. You know, it's funny because when we were sitting in question period this past Monday, um, we were in the opposition lobby and we were fairly high up. So we could see the front row of the liberals and then obviously the whole opposition. Um, and I recall saying to Ryan, I don't think it was during, I think it was after, I was like, did you see who wasn't there? It was Pablo Rodriguez. He was not there. Uh, so that's very interesting. Yeah, and it's a big blow to Trudeau because another one yeah. bites the dust. Another well, minister leaves the party. Yeah, it's not just a backbencher. It's a minister. These guys get paid like 50% more than a regular MP. So that is a very prestigious job to be leaving. And uh, it's another huge blow of confidence to this liberal government who is just breaking apart at the seams. They're crumbling. We all knew that the NDP leader had sold out the people and signed on to a costly coalition with the, this carbon tax prime minister to tax people's food, punish their work, double their housing costs, and unleash crime in their communities. But he claimed that he'd tear, he had torn up the carbon tax coalition so that Winnipeggers would not fire him in a by-election. But as soon as the votes were counted, he betrayed them too and taped exactly. back together this carbon tax coalition. How can anyone ever believe what he says again? So if you notice, um, after his last uh, question in French, Pierre just stood up again. And that wasn't a cut. That was, nobody stood up on the government side to answer his question because they're like, well, you're not asking us a question. Yeah, and they're not supposed to ask questions of other opposition parties. I don't know if there's any rules against asking rhetorical questions that no one is expected to answer. Well, the uh, the opposition party can't answer the question because you're supposed to be asking it of the government. Right. But if nobody on the government stands up, then they just say, all right, next question. So this is actually an interesting opportunity that Pierre is taking here to almost have his own speech time during the most televised portion of the government, which is question period. So many, many Canadians are watching this. Uh, and the news agencies are covering this as well. So, um, but before this happened, Jagmeet Singh announced that he's going to continue to support the government in the next uh, confidence vote. Wow, uh, he announced that? Yeah. Wow, that's a bad move. It's, well, here, <laughs> here's the problem, right? Because if Quebec votes for confidence and the NDP votes non-confidence, because they're like, well, you know, we're safe this time. What if the, ND, what if the Quebec party votes non-confidence next time and... Singh still wants to A, save his pension, and B, save Pharmacare. He then has to vote confidence. How do you explain that? Okay, but this is the guy, and this is what drives me nuts, like, because this makes no sense from a political perspective. So Jagmeet is the guy that's going, I'm going to be the next Prime Minister of Canada, yada, yada, yada. If that were the case, you wouldn't care about whatever crappy bill you've got in the House you'll right do it now yourself. or in the Senate right now because it is a crappy bill. Like it's not even, it doesn't even promise anything. It's for a framework for Pharmacare. So that's number one. You would just be like, okay, you know what? We're running on Pharmacare. Canadians, if you want Pharmacare, you need to vote NDP, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how you would get votes. And the other thing, I often hear um, even news reporters saying, oh, well, the NDP is broke. They don't have money for an election. Yes, they do. They own their headquarters in Ottawa and they just mortgage the whole thing whenever an election is coming. They use that money, they pay for their election, and then they start paying it off over the next four years. Yeah, so it's, 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 a no, it's, it's, it's no big deal. Um, but... You know, this is the thing. Singh has put himself in a box and that box is really, really small. And this does nothing but just tear away support 
any support that he would have garnered by tearing up the agreement. Well, and it it makes him look corrupt as he was accused of being the other day. I mean, if I had said something, if I promised something and then was continually going back on my word, people would think I'm dishonest and corrupt and they would have every right to do so. This chair is in a very uncomfortable situation here. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. The NDP leader was terrified he was going to lose a by-election in Winnipeg, a NDP stronghold. So he put out a Hollywood production where he claimed he had torn up the carbon tax coalition onto which he had signed up, <laughs> that he was going to stop fighting for his pension and start fighting for the people. But once the votes were counted, he betrayed them again. He is a fake a phony and a fraud. How can anyone ever believe what this sellout NDP leader says in the future? And there's Fergus with the mute button. So, um, and this is interesting because he, he calls him a fraud. He calls him a phony. Um, yes, he is, but that's not in line with parliamentary rules. <laughs> Um, so, if anything, he should be admonished by the, the, speaker. the speaker for using unparliamentary language. Um, but I think Fergus is just so confused at what's going on here that he's not really sure what to do. Yeah, because I don't think he's experienced enough to have seen a question period where the leader of the opposition takes the opportunity to just have a speech, I guess, give a speech uh, in 35 second segments to the house and to Canadian viewers. And the best part about this is, is nobody's allowed to respond to it because the government's not going to respond to it. It's not addressed to them. And, and right now the liberals are happy to have Pierre talk bad about the NDP and, and, uh, and, and, and the bloc because right now they're all opponents. Yeah. It's a race to the bottom for those three. <laughs> So if you look, there's some words being shared between the NDP and the, and the Conservatives. Oh, yeah, because the NDP... Okay, so on the screen where you're looking on the right-hand side, you can obviously see where the Conservatives are. And then the block would be in the section below that. And then in the very corner, we couldn't even see them from where we were sitting um, because the control room was in the way. But that's where the NDP sit. And then obviously the Liberals are on the government side. So uh, they were definitely getting into it with somebody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe Jagmeet was trying to talk all tough to uh, to the conservatives like he was that gentleman that was out in the courtyard. I don't know. But um, uh, this is the problem, NDP. Uh, you have nobody to blame but yourselves because you put yourselves into this ridiculous position. Right. You eroded your own credibility. So we couldn't hear what was said, but evidently somebody said someone something that uh, was either a good burn or it was a pretty big insult because I think all of you heard uh, uh, when Fergus put the mics back on, you just heard everyone go, whoa. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this isn't this this isn't Wednesday. This is this no. stuff's supposed to happen on Wednesday when you know Trudeau's in the house. Yeah. But Trudeau's gone. Freeland's gone. <laughs> Rodriguez is gone. Um, and all of this stuff was happening uh, today. So it's as we said, this was going to be a spicy fall, and the beginning <laughs> sessions are not disappointing. Professional manners, Pol police, order. Colleagues, there are some long-standing traditions of this house which we should endeavor to respect. It is important that we ask questions in question period to make government accountable to the people of Canada. The questions... So for the record, that's the liberals that are clapping. Well, you know, he is right, though. That's what question period is for. It is for the opposition to ask questions of the government. But it is also for the government to answer 
questions for the opposition and therefore for Canadians. Hold that thought. The questions by their very nature should be pointed, should be tough, should be specific, and the answers should also be clear. There you now go. you hear the conservatives <laughs> saying, the government, oh, so, so we're supposed to get answers now. The government forgets that last part repeatedly for a government that, you know, fashioned itself as, you know, we're going to be the most transparent government ever. You guys sure do a very, very poor job of it. Oh, it's, it's disgusting. It's just disgusting. I don't think they've ever answered a single question in question period as far as I can remember. For this to work, for this to work, we also have to make sure that we work within the rules that we have. There were some important questions which were asked, but were not related to the administration of the government. And therefore, there weren't responses to that. And it is important to make sure that we do that. We have so many other tools available to us as members to make the comments that we need to make outside of question period to comment about how we want to do. Now, while the microphone was off, while the microphone was off, there were, I would suspect, although this, the chair didn't hear that, there might have been some strong words which were exchanged between members. I ask members to please remember that Canadians are looking at us. And let us conduct ourselves in a way really befitting of each of our constituencies and the country as a whole. So. Oh, you better believe Canadians are watching. More than probably in the history of this parliament. Because Canadians are tired, they're fed up, they're broke, and they're suffering. And obviously the Premier of Quebec feels the same way because he's hearing it from all of his constituents that they can't handle any more strain on their support systems in Quebec. But the Liberal government wants to keep this going. And here's the here's going to be the interesting thing with the bloc because the Premier of Quebec is not going to hold the Liberals accountable if this keeps going. He's going to hold the Bloc Québécois accountable. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. But, um, you know, that was uh, the highlight of question period where Pierre basically got to have a free speech and, uh, uh, and, and Fergus, you know, reasonably cited that he should be asking questions of the government. Um, but when he said that, well, you're not, you know, the questions, you know, aren't related to the administration of this government, I think all Canadians would disagree because when they're asking about the other parties, propping up and supporting this government and allowing them to remain in power, well, that is allowing them to continue to administrate the government in this country. Now, per parliamentary rules, the leader of the bloc and leader of the NDP aren't allowed to answer those questions. Right. But I think it's just as important that they're asked and that they're asked over and over and over until they finally wake up to the fact that what's in the best interest of Canadians and Quebecers is that we vote down this government and call a snap election as soon as possible.